density of states in graphene um, can be calculated uh, the same way um, at, as it's done for a free particle model just we use the different dispersion relation so in graphene the energy is uh, linearly proportional to momentum h bar vfk and we then use again the same trick so you have kx ky and we consider the states at the wave vector k so we take um, a narrow a ribbon of uh, in the k states and then we, we integrate uh, the number of states in this uh, this ribbon here the the states here in, in the shaded region would be 2 pi k dk and then the total number of states is uh, number of states k at, at dk would be 2 pi k dk divided by the separation between those states and the separation again it depends on the size of the sample and for the mm, for the uh, two-dimensional case we have one one of the states is quantized and the x and y uh, macroscopic uh, compounds so we use this um, this trick by breaking the sample the macroscopic sample into this multitude of the k states so we divide by 2 pi over lx times 2 pi over ly and then we multiply it by 2 that's because of spin and then we also multiply by another 2 that's because of another degree of freedom it's called valley and that was um, when we were talking about the first brilliant zone in graphene we were discussing that you have this k and k prime so those are different valleys that was because um, because of the properties of the two-component wave function so those are independent you have to count them separately they and they are, those are as good as good a quantum property as a spin in graphene then we can rearrange all these bits lx and ly's and the two pi's gets cancelled so your m of k dk is now 2a a is the lx times ly k k dk over pi kdk we can take from this one from the dispersion relation so k dk is ede over h bar vf squared and that means now that um, k dk is 2a uh, ede over pi h bar vf squared and we usually write a density of states per unit area per GE. So uh, we're using G. Right? So G of E for graphene is 2E over pi h bar square VF squared. Or if you want explicitly um, talk about the spin and valley degeneracy so you can then say the g spin times g valley divided by 2 pi e to the absolute values because of the electron hole symmetry in the low in the lower in the low particle approximation low energy approximation h bar squared vf squared and the plot then would look something like that so we have g of e e here and it's again as a linear linear behavior. Since we calculated already density of states, let's go one step further and uh, talk about the carrier carrier density in graphene. So if you want to calculate the number of charge carriers um, you would need to integrate density of states and we would count the the Fermi level from the Dirac point because of the electron hole symmetry this looks like a good point 
So the neutrality, your Fermi level is here. And if you now putting some electrons or taking out some electrons from the system, then you will have um, several different scenarios. So the Fermi level goes up or it goes down, depending whether you're taking electrons in or out. And then you would need to calculate this, um, this excess of electrons here or this lack of electrons in this region. That's what our density I'm talking about here. So density of states is the integral from zero to the Fermi energy of uh, G of e d, and that's um, integral zero if um, G spin G value over two e over h bar square v f squared, and then all these bits are the contacts constants, that, so they go out uh, of the integral, and your n is. Uh, Gs Gv to pi. Oh, pi was missing here. Times one over h bar square v f squared. Times so uh, if you take the integral e f squared over two. And the, this is again a pretty surprising result. So the actually the the Fermi level of graphene is a function of carrier density. So you can actually express this one, right? This is uh, so n is uh, uh, so g spin g value is four divided by two pi. So and then we have two from here, so times two. So all these fours cancel times ef squared over h bar square vf squared. So this means that the, the Fermi level is h bar vf square root of pi n. You would need to have modules and then the sine times the sine of n to have a correct expression. And that's and that's quite quite clear because what is the Fermi level? It's, it's related to the how how easy it is to put or take out the electron from the system. So if you consider this case, there will be somewhere here is the vacuum level. This is the position of the Dirac point. And this distance is uh, uh, the work function, phi or something like that, which is uh, related to Fermi level. Basically a different way of counting. When you count Fermi level from this point, so the work function you count from the vacuum level. And this means if you change the carrier density, so the vacuum level remains the same, so your phi changes, and then in the other case, uh, you can have it uh, somewhere here. And so while this distance is always constant from the Dirac point to the vacuum level, this one is always the same, the work function actually changes, so the Fermi level changes. And uh, many, many interesting properties can be observed. So one of those would be the, the field effect uh, transistor behavior because you can easily tune the carrier density. So you change. So if your N is, uh, is tunable well, in, the, in the wide range, this means the conductivity also tunable using a Druda model. where I have sigma is n e mu. It's mobility, this is the carrier density.